Another deep inhale. Absorb the life energy. of it, what is the technique that he's using, but being exposed to that work of art, it gives you a very distinct impression of beauty. And uh, sacred architecture can function in very much a similar way, where you enter into a certain space and everything has been designed with particular mathematical ratios in mind, so that when you enter into it, if you're truly receptive, if your mind is somewhat silent, it can become like uh, an initiation. And many sacred temples were created specifically for that purpose. They were initiation machines. That's one good way to think about it. So um, I've always been interested in a kind of art which is not so much interested in what is seen, but what's the nature of, of course that's a part of the art, but also what's the nature of the seer? What's the nature of the consciousness which is perceiving the art? The intelligence which sees through the eyes, hears through the ears, smells through the nose, tastes through the tongue. And there's a kind of art where the artist can hold up a mirror so that you can see more clearly into your own original nature. So um, I've been dealing with Alex for some time and uh, he's expressed his mindset to me, his way of thinking. And uh, I was immediately touched by the fact that he's passing through this process on a completely, not necessarily even knowing where it is leading, but uh, it is distinctly something that's relevant to self-knowledge. So when art becomes an instrument for self-knowledge, um, it's really something that's quite special and valuable, uh, so that art becomes not just something that's an appreciation of beauty, but helps to elevate the human mind awaken inspiration and ultimately, if possible, overcomes something of our human suffering. So um, there are some statements uh, by some artists which point very clearly to the side. Has anyone heard of William Blake? William Blake, everyone? The painter? He says, if the doors of your senses were cleansed, everything would appear as it is infinite. And another artist, Paul Cezanne, very insightful statement. He says, a day will come when a carrot, a carrot, freshly perceived, will trigger a revolution. So, in yogic terminology, we have some similar kind of terminology. Shiva, Shiva is the destroyer, and it's said that when Shiva is perceiving the universe through his third eye, the whole universe is incinerated. Of course, this isn't something that's literal. Then the universe is not annihilated, but the universe as you've been dreaming about it, as you have assumed it to be, as you have been projecting about it, that universe has come to an end. So when we are talking in yoga about third eye, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, third eye is referring to a means of perception which is no longer corrupted by thought or memory. So when you look at a flower, normally you're imposing all your projections on the flower, your memories of the flower, your previous experiences about the flower. So there's this huge barrier between the pure witness in you, the projections of the mind, and that flower. See? 
So what would it be like to just perceive the flower through a transparent lens? And um, if you can bring yourself into this state where you can just simply be a witness without clinging to your mental projections, after all, all the source of human creativity lies within consciousness itself. So if you want to enhance your creativity, what better way than to deepen your self-knowledge and to be more in tune with the nature of consciousness?